to unlocking natural capital value in the Australian cotton industry, and I think it can be probably tweaked for, for any industry. Um, all you need to do is understand your ESGs, map your actions against your UN SDGs, understand your customers' uh, SBTs, uh, throw in an LCA, adopt my BMP, gain your BCCs, and if you need any help, talk to the LLS. So what more could you want? We got there. Slides are still coming. Look, I just want to give you a quick overview of the Australian cotton industry for those who may not be overly familiar with it. Um, our core areas uh, these days spread from the, uh, the, the border near Victoria in the Murray Valley, uh, really starts to pick up in the Murrumbidgee Valley, back into the more traditional areas, the Macquarie and the Namoy and the Guaida Valley, across into Queensland, in around that Darling Downs and out to St George, and then up to the central highlands. And in more recent times, we've seen a, a either an emergence or, if you like, a re-emergence of cotton in the, in the northern part of Australia, some in North Queensland, in the Northern Territory and over in um, the um, uh, Ord River area of uh, Western Australia. Uh, two new cotton gins, one's almost guaranteed to start pressing its first bale next week in Catherine in the Northern Territory and there's one under construction in, um, in the Ord River. Um, Lots of myths about the Australian cotton industry. There's this perception that it's all controlled by big corporates. 90% uh, of our farmers are family farmers. They produce about 80% of the, the, the cotton. Um, we're a relatively young industry. The modern Australian industry is now about 65 years old. No, not even that, 60, 62, 63 years old, sort of started in 1960. Um, virtually all cotton growers will grow a range of crops and also may have grazing. Um, and you know, we... Uh, employ on average around about sort of five to, to seven people uh, in each farming business. One of the key things about our, our business is the variability of our production. And it's all about you know, what water is available. And you can see here this graph, you can see the millennium drought there in 2007, 2008, and then uh, it even got worse in um, 2019, 2020. And then it really bounced back. So, yeah, just to give you a sense of that variability. So, in 2019-20, we produced less than 600,000 bales. The next season, we produced 2.2 million, and then the following season, we produced about 5.5 million, which was a record. Now, this is where I suppose this part of the story comes into it. At the moment, every bale of cotton, whether we have a big year or a small year, is sold. It's sold normally at a premium to uh, the world market price as recognition of, of the quality of our cotton, our closeness to the, the, the spinning mills primarily in Asia, um, uh, just a general premium. So that's, that's happening. And so you know, why do we need to do anything more? Um, well, we need to do something more because the world's changing. We've heard a lot about that today. Yesterday, we had the privilege of bringing together around about 200 people from all parts of the cotton supply chain into, into Sydney. And today, 60 of them, including 30 from overseas, are wandering around the Namoy Valley and around uh, Narrabrine Wee War and taking a first-hand look at the Australian cotton industry. Now, virtually all of those 60 uh, people there represent brands, retailers, or people who are manufacturing yarn or cotton fabric. And for many of them, even though their day-to-day -day life is all about that fabric and that fashion and that demand, for many of them, they've never been into a cotton field before. So they actually have no idea on how it's produced. And yet, they're subject to a whole lot of rules and changes that are coming upon us, and we've heard a lot about those today. And our growers are getting, uh, having to um, deal with all that as well and, and prove their sustainability. So we know things have to change. People have talked about today about the regulations that are occurring in Europe. We've got the New York Fashion Act with similar sort of regulations there. Um, you know, we've got voluntary organisations ramping up that pressure to demonstrate sustainability. And brand and retailers are committed to demonstrating their sustainability, except in many cases they have absolutely no idea what that actually means because you know, they don't even know how the crop's produced. But when we had these people in the room yesterday, not only did they learn a lot about the Australian cotton industry, but we learned a lot. We started learning more and more about what they need. And so both sides, it's really, you've got to know your customer. And if we had this conversation, or if I asked a cotton grower um, five, ten years ago, even uh, many today, I said, who's your customer? They might say the cotton merchant that they sell their cotton to, 
or they may go one step further down the line and say, oh, it's a spinning mill in Asia somewhere that buys it. Um, now we have to think about what the, the Levi's and the Nikes and the H&M's and the Ikea's and, and all the Lululemon's and the Country Road and all these brands. We need to understand what they need and what they want. Now we've got a little bit of a head start in sustainability. We, we probably started our sustainability journey before such words as sustainability and social licence came about and that's because we were an industry that was hell-bent on almost becoming extinct by our own actions. Those of you that you know, remember the, the cotton industry of the 1980s, 1990s, you know, you're putting on 20 um, pretty toxic uh, uh, sprays to um, control insects, a lot of pressure, there was talk of cancer clusters, there was all sorts of things out there, there were fish kills, um, a lot. So we had to change. And so in 1991, we commissioned what we believe was uh, the world first environmental assessment of, a, um, of an agricultural industry. And among the, the consultants was, uh, those of you may know, um, uh, uh, David Bellamy from um, you know, uh, fairly well-known, I suppose, um, uh, con conservationist uh, consultant. And uh, they took a hard look at our industry and came up with 70 recommendations. And while it wasn't specifically called this in the recommendations, it led to the establishment of our best management practice program in 1997, when we really started to drive practice change among our growers. We were also very, very fortunate at that time that we became available the, the use of um, genetically modified uh, cotton crops that were able to help us control our main pest, the Heliothus bug. Now, once we were able to control Heliothus, we'll then be able to take a much better and softer approach to, to all other insects. So we've really embraced integrated pest management. That's been part of the journey. We've been really focused since uh, th those times as well on our water use efficiency. And so we've been measuring that for some time. Um, so our, our best management practice program is a paper-based folder about this thick start in 1997. 2010, we went uh, digital. Um, in 2014, we said, well, you know, we're collecting all this data. We need to be able to, A, track what we're doing, but also tell our story. So we launched our first um, cotton sustainability report. We now do those fully every five years with an annual update. And uh, we've just started what we've called our Australian Cotton Industry Roadmap, which I want to sort of concentrate on a little bit more. These are some of the key metrics that you know, we've achieved since we really seriously started uh, measuring in uh, 1992. So today we use 52% less water to produce the same bale of cotton. Or put it another way, where we used X amount of water to grow one bale of cotton um, uh, in 1992 and 1997, we're now producing two with that same amount of water. Because we've actually you know, improved the way that we grow, we're now using for each unit or bale of cotton produced, now takes 34% less land. And this is the big one, and this is uh, the real change to our industry, is that we now use 97% less pesticides than what we were using back in 1992. And that's been a game changer for us, and it's kept us in, in the business. Core, core to this is our My BMP program. It's got those 10 modules. They uh, line up reasonably well with uh, KD 17 principles, um, focus areas. Uh, if you had every standard that's in those modules apply to you, you would have to be able to demonstrate compliance with over 400. Uh, but because different people's farming systems vary, most of our farmers have to uh, demonstrate compliance to so something over 300 of those standards. When they believe that they've met those, uh, those practices, they are independently audited. In Australia, um, if we are uh, accredited with my BMP, so we've gone through that independent audit process, we are recognised by an international organisation, sustainability organisation called Better Cotton. So Better Cotton was formed in, um, I think they might have been created around about 2010. We joined them in 2014. Um, they were made or, or formed from a whole group of um, uh, grower organisation, NGOs, WWF played a key, key role in it, and a number of the brands, um, Solidarity, uh, other organisations. So it was very cross-sectorial, um, people that probably wouldn't normally talk to each other had come, to, come together to set up this Better Cotton, which is a sustainability standard. Um, it applies in many countries around the world. We, we quite honestly believe our My BMP standards, just because of its extent and integrity, far exceeds you know, what's applied in some of the other countries, but we've signed up to it. 
Um, and it's an opportunity and one of those rare opportunities where people are actually seeing a little bit of a modest premium. So if you uh, grow a bale of uh, MyBNP accredited cotton, you'll get a, uh, a BC Better Cotton credit um, and you can sell those off separately and most of the time they sell for 2 to $5. Um, bear in mind a bale of cotton is probably selling for around about 600 so it's quite modest, but it certainly covers any of the compliance costs and provides a little bit more. But this is where the rubber really hits the road because even though at the moment we're still selling every bale we produce, we can see what's coming at us and it's already there in some, some areas, that you know, brands and retailers have to be confident that they, their supply, their, their inputs have been produced sustainably. So they'll turn to other organisations for guidance because they don't, uh, they don't know, you know individual farmers, they don't know the systems and the like. So in the textile space there's an organisation called the Textile Exchange and they've came up with a preferred fibre uh, matrix. And so if I was a brand, I'd say, well, OK, what does the textile exchange say? You know, what, you know these, do these qualify? Well, fortunately, when they, they looked at um, uh, my BMP cotton, we qualified, but we didn't really score all that well. And that really had us scratching, scratching our heads, so we just scraped over the line. And when we dig a little bit deeper, they said, well, you haven't addressed human rights issues. Well, hang on, we live in Australia, <laughs> we've got so many regulations uh, and controls, what, what human rights issues? Well, you haven't specifically addressed them in, the, in your program, so we need to revamp But There's some other issues that you know, we haven't addressed in the way that they would like us to address them. So we're going to take the next step, and as an industry over last year, we spent a whole lot of time working out what we're calling our Australian Cotton Industry Roadmap. And a number of things will come out of that, and you can see them listed, uh, listed there as, uh, as key headlines. Um, we know that we have to be able to demonstrate our, our um, sustainability. So part of that is probably doing a refresh of My BMP. So when My BMP was created, it was really all about us improving our act, making sure we maintained ourselves as an industry, made sure that we, you know, as an industry we were sustainable, but we weren't thinking about brands looking back at us and saying, you know, demonstrate to us. So we have to adjust it so that not only continues to meet our needs as growers, but also meet the needs of the, um, of the brands. Part of that, or a subset of that, is dealing with this human rights issue. Um, just making sure that we can actually demonstrate what we strongly believe is the case, that you know, we do manage our human rights issues in Australia very well, but we've got to be open and transparent about that. One of the key things with all of this is around traceability. So how does a brand know, even though they said that they've bought my BMP cotton or bought some other sustainable uh, cotton, how do they know that's what they've actually got? And so we need to have traceability systems in place. Right at the moment, when a uh, round bale picker picks a bale of cotton, uh, it geolocates exactly where that was cotton was produced. It's got an RFID tag on those modules uh, that goes through all the way to the spinning mill floor. But after that, it can get a little bit messy. So how do we provide it all the way down the supply chain? There's some really cool technology about that. There's a company uh, called Oratane, um, and I believe they can do it with any organic product at all. They could take a sample of this, this shirt, um, run it through their machine. Because we've tested samples all over Australia from, from cotton, they can not only pin uh, using isotopes and um, microelements, they not only say it's definitely Australian cotton, they could say that it was actually produced in the Murrumbidgee, they could actually say it was produced at Collie Ambly, and they could probably say that it was produced at uh, Peter Shepherd's farm at Collie Ambly, and maybe even to the paddock if they've got enough samples. There's another traceability program where at the gin they put uh, just a very small amount of synthetic fibre in uh, right through the supply chain that'll flow through and you could be um, you know, where I normally shop Fifth Avenue in, in New York and I could put a scanner on the shirt and not only could it tell me that uh, it was Australian cotton but you could have the grower and tell that story which is something the brands want and I think I'm getting the wind up so the um, other ones that we it's been talked about a lot industry data we need that data and it's your value I even get the wind up for myself um, so what we're saying is somehow protect your data at the moment, make sure you collect that data, there's got to be value in that data, don't be in a rush to give it away. Um, 
and promotion is the other leg. And, you know, we need to be able to tell our story and help the brands and the, uh, tell the story to the consumers. So thank you very much for a quick fly through on the Australian cotton industry.